Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, excuse the noise of the traffic going by. There's nothing I can do about that. And we don't have very many exhaust shops in this town. So they get kind of loud sometimes. Uh, so I want to just cover uh, some of the stuff that I use for my quick and dirty diagnostics. In this video, I'm going to talk about things like valves, valve timing, things like that. Um, compression. Do you have a cylinder with no compression? Do you see the intake valves opening? Do you see the exhaust valves opening? Are they opening at generally the right time? Uh, you know, th those kinds of things and the kinds of tools that I've developed to do that with. Some of the stuff you have to spend a lot of money on. And once you have some of those core components, so you can make a lot of your own components. And I've done videos on how I made these, but it's been a long time. So a lot of newer subscribers to my channel aren't going to know about those videos. I'll put links to them all like up in the corners and down below. Um, so the first thing you really need is you need a Pico scope, right? This is going to be like a thousand, fourteen hundred bucks or something just for the scope and the basic probes. Um, if you try to get uh, more diagnostic stuff with it, the price goes up and up and up. You know, you'll be spending six thousand dollars before you know it. But you don't actually have to have a lot of that type of Pico stuff to make this a very useful tool. First of all, it does a lot of voltage and, you know, stuff just on its own with just the probes. Um, you really want to get four channels instead of two because if you're doing cam crank correlation and you're talking about an overhead valve engine and it's got two camshafts, you're going to want to be able to get both of those in a crank. And you're going to be able to want to do the front and the back. So, yeah, uh, a four channel is good two channels isn't always enough um, so uh, I'm going to talk about the first thing that I did which was the pressure transducer now Pico has a pressure transducer kit they want like $1,300 for it or something crazy like that last time I looked might be cheaper now but this is my 300 PSI I also have a 100 PSI and a 30 PSI pressure transducer a lot of people will say these won't do any vacuum. Um, as you can see from my video, I'll link, uh, they do show vacuum. They don't necessarily show it 100% accurately. There's no scale for it, but they start at 0.5 volts for zero PSI. So you can still get to zero volts and show some vacuum. Um, but yeah, a pressure transducer that shows perfect vacuum will be important for doing things like a vacuum intake diagnostics. Uh, and I don't have that. And I really don't need it. I've been able to diagnose everything I need to diagnose other ways. But being able to look at the intake on the vacuum side and see and know what the valves are that's opening, closing, that kind of stuff, that would definitely be a time saver, but it's also a huge learning curve. So I just don't do that. Um, so basically, I took this pressure transducer, you get it on Amazon for 10 bucks, an air fitting and this, and you'll, you'll see in the video what size this is. I forget, but I think I got it at the Ace Hardware, this little adapter there, and then I put that on there. And then I used to use the Lyle, uh, but I'll put a link to this down below. My Lyle one finally broke <laughs> and so this is a performance tool or something, adapter hose. And what this is, is a valve hold open tool. So basically if you gotta take a valve spring off of an engine, you don't want the valve to drop down in. You can put this in the spark plug hole, hook this up to your air compressor, pressurize that cylinder so you can take the spring and the retainers off and the, you don't have to worry about the valve dropping down inside the engine. Um, but these are really, handy hoses to have for diagnostics because what I can do is I put an air fitting thing here now I can take my pressure transducer clip that on there and now I have a path from a spark plug hole to my pressure transducer 
I also got these fittings. I'll put a link to these down below. These are all in my Amazon store too. There's a link to that as well. I put all these tools in there. And for the most part in my Amazon store, unless they quit selling something and I had to come up with an alternate part, everything in there is stuff that I've used and like. Um, if there's something that doesn't work out, then I'll usually take that link out. Um, so these are the adapter fittings, right? And so you have adapters to go to all different kinds of sizes of spark plugs on here, all your different styles. What's neat about this kit is it also does M, M18 by 1.5, I think is what this is. This is the same size as an O2 sensor. So you can screw this on here and then I would change down to my 30 PSI pressure transducer because uh, you're checking for a plugged exhaust. Plugged exhaust, one or two PSI in an exhaust is normal. But if you're reading this while the engine's running and it hits seven, eight pounds, that's bad. If it's hitting 15 or 20 pounds, it's really bad. It's really plugged. So you can take your O2 sensor out, screw this in the hole, hook this up to your scope and see what your pressures are. In fact, you could even do this with a multimeter and you would be able to tell roughly what your pressure readings are. Now, the way this works, let me show you my 300 PSI transducer graph, is I basically just have this mapped out. Starts at zero volts, goes to four and a half volts, and shows you some pressure readings along the way. And you can kind of find out where you are as far as voltage and about where you'll be on that graph and know what your approximate pressure is. Um, there is a way to build these custom in the Pico software so that it'll read you the PSI, but um, I don't do that. Um, and then I have one here for my 30 and I got one for the 100 somewhere as well. Um, but that's really nice that that will fit the O2 sensor and all the different spark plugs. Now you can look at your waveform. I'll put a, a link to a video where I did, I, I showed this <clears throat> on my old hand tech scope, which was a piece of crap. Don't buy that. Um, but I showed uh, how you look at a waveform. You can tell the compression. You can tell where it's ending the compression. The valves are still closed. The intake valves open. You can see that, you can see the valves close, you can see it go back to a compression, you can see the exhaust in there as well. Um, you can tell that they're opening about the right time and that everything's good by just doing this without having to pull off a timing belt. Or even, you know, you're just looking for general mechanical problems with valves, that this is a good way to do it. Um, if you're thinking it's really timing related, like a slip timing belt, you might do a cam crank correlation. But the problem is, is Pico has a big library of cam crank correlations that are good, but you might not find one for the vehicle that you're working on. And you always need a known good one to compare it to because they're different between cars. Where this can actually show you like, hey, that valve opened late. <laughs> it's got a timing issue, right? And then you know you got to get into the timing belt or chain or whatever. Um, and then this is the part that hooks to that pressure transducer to power it. I'll put a link to the video where I built this. It has a nine volt battery, an LM7805 voltage regulator with a couple capacitors. And it comes down here is where I hook it into the pressure transducer, right? So that'll hook in, oh, let's see, hooks in like this. Nope, oh, hooks in like this. That'll hook in, right? And then this, I actually just put a coax end on it and I left this looped. So I have a brake caliber hook that I hang from the hood pin and I hang this on the hood and I hang my scope on the hood from this little thing as well. And so these will be hanging up on the hood, right? And then I can take this and just plug it into one of my scope channels directly with the BNC. Boom, you are good to go, right? And now this nine volt battery, I, I normally leave that unhooked 
and then I just hook it up when I'm going to use it. That's how I turn it off and on. Um, and the reason that I put a separate battery on here and I don't power it off the car's 12 volts is because you can deal with a lot of low battery conditions or whatever and you're cranking, that voltage is fluctuating. I just want a really good steady voltage to give me the readings to the scope. So I put that there and that comes down, powers this with the five volts and then returns a reading. Uh, essentially it has three wires that go down to it so I use the crap out of this I, I have used it I've gone through several batteries on it um, and it's continued to just work really well uh, when this breaks um, I have more of these connectors from uh, using this in the past so if this breaks um, I will just get another connector out and make up a nicer one and maybe mount it in a little project box and do all that kind of stuff. So it'll be all nice. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, something that I made, um, and I will put a link to that video down below, uh, is this leak down tester. This is a really nice leak down tester. It has basically a thing right here so you can adjust that it's got two gauges and I can hook that up to the same hose boom <laughs> I've got a leak down tester primary reason I keep an air compressor in my car is in case I need to do a leak down test All right um, and the leak down tester also comes in handy although a lot of times for that I'll just hook to here and turn the pressure down on my air compressor but if you think you have a broken valve you can put this in the spark plug cylinder and you can turn hook this up to your air compressor and turn it down to like 30 psi and then you can listen on the intake you can listen at the exhaust if you hear air rushing out of that cylinder when it's set so the valve should both be closed you know you got a cracked or a bad or a bent valve or something like that <coughs> um but a leak down tester is also good just to see uh, you have low compression. You want to know if it's coming out the valves, going out through the rings, that kind of stuff. Leak down tester is what you're going to need. Um, I will put a link to a video where I did a leak down test on my Pontiac before I rebuilt that engine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I got this hot for some reason too. This is a this is just one of the wires that come with the Pico scope. <laughs> one of the testing leads and these come with really nice wires by the way um and then you know you can't you can't go wrong having you a good old-fashioned compression gauge as well and the reason you don't use the hose off your compression gauge and adapt to that is because it has this little valve in it it's this little one-way valve now you can take that little one-way valve out and use a hose like this but this one has some kind of a weird fitting on it so I just let that one stay. <laughs> the glass broke in this a long time ago, but it still works. Um, this has no brand name on it. I don't even remember where I bought this, but it's actually been a good compression gauge over the years. It keeps on working and working. And it can use all of these same fittings, except this one has one that screws on to take it to the bigger spark plug. And then these other ones will screw. Oh no, I'm sorry. These actually screw onto the smaller one. So that's for the bigger spark plugs. That's for the smaller spark plugs. This would be for a different spark plug, right? And that screws on there. So you can adapt that stuff to do all kinds of stuff that you need to do. But this performance tools kit's really nice covers all the plugs um, and it works uh, with the O2 sensors with most of them I'm sure they make some different size O2 sensors that aren't M18 by 1.5 I have yet to run in a, one into one that I've taken out and it's not been but I may have worked on a car with a different size O2 sensor but I didn't have to pull it so I didn't look you know um, it was, something else was the problem um, but that's basically these kinds of tools um, I'll put links to all those other videos so that you can see them 
uh, what I'm also gonna do is, next time I have to do a relative compression test, and it, well, not relative, I'm gonna do an actual compression test. So a relative compression test would just be, I take one cylinder that I'm pretty sure is good, right? And I measure the compression on it. And then I look at either the voltage or the current on my scope and see how much it dropped the voltage or how much current it gave or it drew. Current's just a little more accurate than the voltage. And then I can look at the other cylinders and see if they're roughly the same, right? That I know I'm not dealing with one that has zero PSI or 30 PSI, right? I know they're all around 150 or 160 or whatever. Um, with this, you get a more accurate measurement of that compression and then you can really match that up with the current and tell more what exactly the compression is. But this will allow you to also see if you have a valve. So for instance, if you have an intake valve uh, that is sticking closed, you won't see that in a compression test because if it's stuck closed, it's gonna give you compression. But you'll see that on the scope with this you'll be able to see the curve of the line it didn't actuate the right way right and you'll understand that better when you see my video so you could also have a valve that is sometimes not opening but it usually opens or sometimes it it it, it you know it's intermittent you'll see that with this you won't always see those with a compression gauge so your compression will look fine and you'll be like well i got compression so that must be good well, you can have compression and still have bad timing you know, or a bad valve. So that's why it's important to have this. Um, but that's about it. So, you know, you guys spend money on the Pico scope, really. Um, hand techs are just junk. Um, there's some other types of scopes out there. There's an Alltel one and a Snap-on one, and I'm sure those work fine. I just really love my Pico and uh, it works it works well it saves me time saves me money i don't like the latest pico software i'm still running the older version because it works well and the newer version is confusing and i can't figure it out but one of these days i probably will i think they might even have a newer new version now there might be two versions back i don't know but i really like my software and it does everything i needed to do so i'm sticking with that i think it's version six um, I think they have a version 7 and I thought I saw the other day they came out with an 8 but that's in beta but I really like 6 so I'm sticking with it as long as I can but that's all I got for now I'll talk to y'all later this is Tom your frugal prepper